Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to part two of my review of Tan Models' new 140A scale RF-84F Thunder Flash. Or as I think of it, the interesting part where I actually look at the kit, as opposed to blather on about context and the history of the actual aircraft. So part one of this review is all about context, setup, and history. Now in part two, we're gonna to get to the good stuff, you know, actually looking at the kit itself. I will say the last you know, two, two and a half weeks have been kind of frustrating. Ever since I found out I would be receiving one of these sample kits, it's been sort of a waiting game and watching as everyone in Europe got their hands on their samples and posted various reviews across the internet. That's the vagaries of international shipping for you though. Um, my box arrived today and it looks like it has been mauled by a bear. Fortunately, the boxes inside of that box came through relatively unscathed. There are a few deemed corners, but nothing beyond that. So, at long last, I have the RF-84F in my possession. Now, before I start digging into the kit itself, I do want to spend just 10 seconds talking about the box. You know, I typically make fun of reviews that spend time lovingly discussing the box and everything. But this one, you know, it is a good, solid, top-opening kind of a thing. One thing I want to call your attention to, it's a little touch, but to me, it's little touches make these kind of kits. The tape that you you know that is used to seal the kit has a cheeky little remove before flight uh, tag on it. You know, nice little nod, something that is very easily overlooked, but you know, to me, it's it's a little touch that shows passion for what they are making, and that goes miles for me. So with that, enough talk of the box. Um, Let's move into the kit itself. What's in the box? Not to you give me the What's gun. in the fucking box? So inside the box, the RF-84F is presented across five gray sprues and two clear sprues. There's a one sheet depicting schemes for not one, but nine separate aircraft, and an instruction manual, and a separate full color markings guide complete with profiles and even a few reference photos. There's also a rather large decal sheet and a smaller correction sheet. And finally, a mouse pad with a tarmac graphic that can also act as a display for your finished Thunderflash. Personally, the mouse pad seems a bit hokey to me. Maybe it's because I haven't used a mouse in something like 10 years. Anyway, while the idea of an included display graphic is certainly interesting, I can't help but wonder what else could have gone into this kit instead. You know, seat belts, canopy masks, something like that. Anyway, let's get to the plastic. Let's start with sprue A, which is dominated by the two fuselage halves. Breaking with what seems like a tradition of bisecting and dividing up the fuselages of early Cold War jets in odd, cumbersome ways, it's really refreshing to see that Tan Model has given us legitimate, full-length fuselage halves. Shape-wise, they look rather good to my eye, and even capture some of the slab siding around the nose. The detail is rather nice as well, with finely scribed panel and hatch lines and delicate screw and rivet detail. You know, I had to laugh at a comment I read on a forum recently trashing the mad riveter who defiled Tan Model's kit. Because when you look at pictures of actual RF-84Fs, the rivet detail seems to line up to the reality. Sprue A also contains the main gear base, which again, to my eye, look very close to the real deal. If you're so inclined, they could probably use some more prominent visual wiring detail, but otherwise, I really can't find any fault with them. The main wheels and tires are also here, and they carry through that fat wheel, thin tire arrangement found on the actual RF-84. Another nice touch, the nose wheel's actually been treated with respect here. And with other F-84F kits that I've seen, it's pretty common for the nose strut wheel and tire to all be molded as one piece. Tan model's been kind enough to not take that lazy way out. Also on sprue A, we find the speed brakes. And these look quite good inside and out. The only fault that I can really find with them is that on the real thing, the indents that you see on the outer surface here are actually holes. Opening them up may interfere with some of the gorgeous detail on the inside. Lastly, sprue A contains separate camera bay access doors. These are refreshingly optional. If you want to display the camera bays opened up, there are indentions inside the fuselage that make it easy to cut the closed doors out. Again, this is that flight line look that I referenced back in part one. Sprue B is dominated by the wings and the control surfaces. Again, the surface detail shines through and seems to match that found on one-to-one -one thunder flashes. However, here is with the rest of the kit, the plastic has a very slight roughness to it. Not something that would likely get in the way with one of the camouflage schemes at the RF-4, but if you're chasing a bare metal finish, I would highly recommend an overall wet sanding to polish the plastic smooth. The wings also have an interesting joining arrangement. Instead of the usual alignment pins and holes, there's an alignment bar on the leading edge of the lower wing that slots into a similar trough in the upper wing. It's definitely a beefier solution than I'm used to seeing. Amid all the aerodynamic bits, we've also got the main gear legs. 
These do a commendable job representing the weird gear arrangement of the Thunderflash, where the struts were embedded right into the bay doors. I assume to keep the bays as shallow as possible. Moving into sprues C and D, which come joined as one super sprue, we have the larger wing-mounted drop tanks and pylons, again looking like a nice match for reality. These sprues also really start digging into the internal detail, including the intake and compressor fan, cameras, cockpit tub, and instrument panel. While the latter aren't the best that I've seen in 148 scale, they're definitely well ahead of the average, and I'd be hard-pressed to see the need for resin replacements. Sprues E and F, again another super sprue, contain the smaller tanks that were mounted under the intakes, as well as a rather nice nose strut. The sprue tabs look somewhat cumbersome to remove, however the detail in the strut itself looks quite good. E and F are also chock full of still more interior bits, the canopy hoist and cameras and injection seat. On the sprues I must confess this leaves me a little bit unimpressed, but having seen, having seen the seat built up it actually looks rather good, though I have to admit if a resin option were available I'd probably still lean in that direction. And frustratingly, there are no seatbelts included anywhere in this kit. Fortunately, the belts on the Thunderflash look pretty basic, and I'm willing to bet that mostly any belt set for an F-86 or even for US World War II fighters would probably suffice. The last gray sprue is the tiny sprue eye, which contains the two intake faces. I'm sure there's a molding reason for this, and these parts do look rather good, though I have to note there's a faint separation line that's going to probably need some cleaning up. Moving on from the solid sprues, the two clear sprues are split up quite logically. One contains the canopy, or more properly canopies, as Tan Model gives you the option of a one-piece closed canopy and a three-piece affair that can be posed open. Now these may not be, to me, a 132nd levels of balls, but they're still quite good, and I'm thrilled to see Tan Model using the practice of extending the windscreen into the body, as this makes it much easier to install and, if necessary, clean up. The second clear sprue contains everything else. This includes the camera lenses and the camera windows that festoon the nose of the RF-84. The windows will all have to be masked, as the surrounding framing is molded with them. For the most part, this should be pretty easy, but the rounded corners of the nose window may take a bit more care. Moving on, I'm going to skip the instruction manual for a moment, and take a look at the markings guide. Now this guide starts off with a detailed stencil map, which I really hope doesn't need explanation. Frustratingly, there's a little note about the included instrument panel decal recommending removing the detail from the instrument panel itself if you want to use this decal. Yeah, I'm not going to be doing that. Moving on to the schemes, we have a bare metal Turkish RF, then a bare metal American Thunderflash based out of West Germany with some nice splashes of color on the tail, tanks, and wing fences. Next, we have a very colorful bare metal Luftwaffe example, EA244. If I were going with the kit decals, I think this is probably the one I would consider. Yet another bare metal contender, a rather clean example from the Italian Air Force comes next followed by two bare metal French ships. The second, from the Belfort Squadron, has a pretty cool battle axe graphic, and Suez crisis bands on the wings and fuselage. Next, we jump right over the grey-green Euro camouflage and go straight to the final paint the RF-84 wore, the SEA camouflage scheme, with two examples in Greek and American service respectively. Rounding out the nine is a lone grey-green-blue scheme in service with the Dutch Air Force. After this preponderance of markings, the guide carries on with a few helpful reference photos, something I really wish more manufacturers saw fit to do. Of course, a markings guide is only as good as the decals it's guiding, and this is where Tan Model's Thunderflash runs into some problems. While the decals do look rather nice from a distance, if you look closely, they become something of a mess. The blue on the US insignia seems a shade or two too light, for example, and the Dutch roundels have some alignment issues that, once seen, just can't be unseen. The French roundels have green centers instead of light blue, although Tan Model saw fit to include some corrections on a small sheet. Still, even if you look at the big over-intake decals for the bare metal schemes, there's actually some graininess going on across all the decals. Taken as a whole, I'd have to say that the decals are far and away this kit's biggest weakness. And I guess if you're going to have a failing, this is the place to do it, right? You know, decals are easily rectified through the aftermarket, and fortunately the RF-84F already has some pretty good representation out there. Finally, it's time to touch on the instructions, and the way the kit's engineered. The instructions are presented in a wonderful CAD layout, and are very clear with good part and paint code callouts. Helpfully, any paint needed for a given page is listed out right at the top of the page, so you don't have to deal with constantly flipping back to the front to find out what E stands for. The cockpit buildup looks perhaps a bit fussy, but it's logical and easy to follow. Again, the lack of seat belts is a sore point for me, but sourcing something appropriate through aftermarket shouldn't be a problem. The camera bay internals look like they could be dicey. On step 24, for example, there are some rather vague fit that looks to be going on, 
It's hard to say without actually building the kit if this is true on the plastic as well, but you know, if you're planning on building yours closed up, alignment is probably not the biggest concern in the camera bay. One thing I really like is how these instructions pay attention to the little things. For example, not only showing you what to do, but also what it should look like after you do it. I also appreciate that on page 5, right before you start thinking about closing the fuselage, it comes right out and tells you, you don't need to fuss with any weights if you've installed all the nose parts. The wings, to me, are perhaps the most interesting part of this build, as they fit to the fuselage in some rather deep grooves that should, in theory, assure proper alignment. This is reinforced by the way the intakes install into the fuselage and protrude so that they slot into the wings. If this all works, it should be awesome. But the operative phrase here is if. Awesome engineering is one thing. Awesome fit? That's another. So how well did TAN model pull off their engineering ambitions? Overall, I'd say they pulled them off pretty well. The kit does fit together well enough, though maybe not with the authority and confidence you'd find in, say, a Wingnut Wings kit or Tamiya's run of world-beating 132nd kits. Now, a quick caveat. A test fit is by its nature a rush job. Taking a bit more care to clean up some of the sprue tabs and join areas would probably improve matters a bit, and by skipping the majority of the internals, I'm almost certainly introducing levels of play that won't be present when building the thing up for real. That said, the fit's good, but not jaw-droppingly great. For example, the fuselage halves go together well, but up around the nose there's a bit of a step. Not a big deal, easy enough to clean up, but still good but not great. Staying with the nose for a moment, the clear nose cone camera window piece fits quite well. However, it's lacking any kind of alignment tab that would be really helpful making sure that it's properly centered. The wings, happily, fit nicely into the fuselage slots, again with some flash cleanup, particularly around the intakes. Now, this fit isn't the positive hold-itself-in-place kind of fit. You know, if you set them in the slots, they will flop over, though that, that story could certainly be different once the intake internals are installed. And either way, with a bit of glue, the wing root join is going to be rock solid on this thing. The horizontal stabilizers are a very loose fit in their mounting holes. Ultimately, this is a minor nuisance and an easy enough fix, but a more positive fit here would have been pretty nice to see. So coming out the other side, where do we stand? Overall, I'm certainly impressed with the kit TAN models put together. The detail is impressive and the engineering is imaginative, and the flight line philosophy is a refreshing change from the throw all the panels open silliness that some other manufacturers seem to favor. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to recommend this kit, particularly to anyone with an interest in Cold War era jets, even if the Thunder Flash was middle of the pack in terms of performance. It filled its role rather well. It was an absolute looker with a wide array of attractive schemes and markings. It's about time we had a good tool of it to play with. With all that said, I'm generally not one to back out of a review with a limp highly recommended. And for all the good, I also see some room for improvement. First, the plastic could be a bit smoother, especially on an aircraft with so many bare metal options. An easy enough fix with some wet sanding, but still, I feel, worth noting. Second, I'd say that the molding precision is about 85-90% to 90 there. Overall, the detail level is fantastic, but I did encounter a few small issues with microflash and some troublesome spots, and there are also separation lines along the leading edges of the wings and things like that that need to be dealt with. Third, the mouse pad display stand thing just doesn't do it for me. If I had my druthers, I'd rather see that investment plowed back into the model in the form of seat belts or canopy masks or something like that. And finally, the decals, which to my mind are the kit's unquestioned Achilles heel. Fortunately, as I mentioned earlier, if the kit has to have an Achilles heel, this is really the place to have it, as aftermarket replacements are widely available and more appear to be on the way. So, there you have it. Overall, TAN Model's first 140A scale release is a very impressive opening salvo, and though I think they have a few small areas to work on, the RF-84F bodes very well for their forthcoming kits. Again, if you're at all a fan of Cold War aviation, I'd urge you to give this one a look. I'd also like to thank Barris Tanzoy and Tan Model for graciously providing a sample for me to blather on about. It's been an absolute pleasure, and look for the kit to be hitting my bench hopefully sometime soon. Until then, model on dudes!